morning. Grace and peace be with you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to Round Hill United Methodist Church for this 10 a.m. worship service. And we're glad that you can join us wherever you may be for this fourth Sunday of Advent as we get ever closer to that celebration of Christmas. Today, as we celebrate this fourth Sunday of Advent, we celebrate peace, the peace that we have through Jesus Christ, our Savior, a, a peace that per- surpasses our understanding as Paul talks about. And we're glad that you could be with us as we experience this peace of Christ. If you've never joined us before in this format, there's some wonderful opportunities that we have, even though we are not together here physically in this place. One of that is through the comments section on Facebook Live. You could write amongst one another, talk amongst each other, and kind of lift one another up in encouragement and, uh, and fellowship as this congregation and as this community It's also uh, very helpful uh, to use the comment section later in our service where we have something called the glory sightings, a moment where we lift up where we have seen God at work in our lives. You could also use the the comment section later in our service where we lift up our prayers, our joys and concerns as we uh, share with one another and and lift up to God our our concerns and prayers. There's also a part of the, the Facebook Live that allows you to use a thumbs up and a heart, which are likes and love buttons. And these uh, allow you to almost do like amens or hallelujahs as we participate through this service. So as you hear a song or a prayer or a scripture or a message that just speaks to you, you can use that uh, as a way of, of celebrating and praising what God is doing in your life. Again, as I mentioned, today is the celebration of, of peace that Jesus Christ brings as we go on this fourth Sunday of Advent. And as we continue, we, we light the fourth candle, the candle of peace. And over this uh, past four weeks, we have been doing something called Home for Christmas, uh, a celebration of recognizing we are, we are stuck at home. We are facing a new crisis, pandemic, whatever you would like to, to call this time that we are in, uh, but that even in this moment that we are in, we can experience the joy, experience the peace, experience everything that Christmas is all about, even from this moment of home. And so we bring these lightings of the, the Advent candle, which we normally have different families come up and do here in the sanctuary. We have them uh, do these readings from at home to remind us of our unity together as the body of Christ. Today's reading of the peace candle comes from the Hephron family, and so we invite the Hephron family to share with us the reading for our peace candle. Came upon a midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men, from heaven's all-gracious king. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. The sweet and dreamlike melody of it came upon a midnight clear may hide from us the forceful context in which it was written. Edmund Sears penned these words in 1849 as as tension prior to the Civil War were beginning to heighten focusing not on the manger scene, but on the angels' songs of peace. The hymn became both a song of hope for what God was doing in the world, but also a powerful reminder that the world they currently knew was not as Christ intended. The hymn is now considered one of the earliest social gospel hymns, a movement from the late 1800s and early 1900s dedicated not to personal holiness, but social reform. Today, we light the peace candle, recognizing that in the midst of the pandemic, racial injustice, political polarization, poverty, war, and more, the world is not as Christ intended. May the angels' words of peace on earth move us both with anticipation and action as we prepare the way for the Prince of Peace. And so we light the peace candle. And as we light this peace candle, let us join in celebrating and singing that hymn uh, that we read of that came upon at midnight clear. Uh, Aaron Heffron has been so gracious to play it for us on his trombone, and so you can uh, sing with him over top of the, the playing of his trombone, or you can just listen to his wonderful playing as you read along these important words. Let us join in singing, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Thank you. 
And thank you to Aaron Heffron for that wonderful music. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke. In chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how, the, how can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join me in a word of prayer? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. As we approach Christmas Day, this is one of the magical times of the year, a time of great expectation, a time of great faith, especially for children, especially as they anticipate the arrival of Santa Claus on Christmas. And maybe no book and movie combination can depict this great faith and expectation quite as well as the book The Polar Express. And The Polar Express, which has this great scene of a, a bell that rings, and the kids that, who, who can hear it are able to then recognize their faith the belief that they have in Jesus, or, or belief that they have in Santa. It's a, an a ability for them to hear these sleigh bells of Santa recognizes the, the faith, the belief that they have. It's amazing, this childlike faith, this belief, especially in the, the midst of all the, the questions that children have. You know, questions like, how does Santa get to all of the houses of children in one night? How do reindeer fly? What happens if a house doesn't have a chimney? These are, these are tough questions for us to answer, and I'm really thankful for movies like The Santa Claus that helps us to answer these tough questions. And the gist of these answers are that on Christmas, anything is possible with Santa. Santa can do it. And it brings us great faith and brings us great expectation for these children. As adults, this is an expectation and a longing and a faith that we want. It's something that we long to have, and yet many of us fail to hear this ringing bell. We've grown up, we said, we're adults now. We see the world as it is. We've been disappointed one too many times, let down too many times. We call ourselves realists now. We know the limits of things, the limits of our finances, the limits even of our own bodies. We know what expectations really 
should be. What we really do is we kind of create this safety net for ourselves, this worldview that keeps ourselves in a nice, clean, safe box that everything at least is under our control. But as we hear our gospel message this morning, the angel Gabriel coming to Mary and telling her this news, there's nothing safe or predictable or in control for Mary about it. As we hear it, the angel Gabriel says to Mary, even though you are a virgin, you are to expect to bear a son, and this son will be the Most High, the Son of God. He will sit on the throne, and his kingdom will have no end. And if this is all too much for you, Mary, just know at this very time your cousin Elizabeth who in her old age, who others have called barren, is in her sixth month already expecting a child. As Mary ponders these things and asks, how is this possible? The response that the angel Gabriel gives is that nothing is impossible for God. Nothing is impossible with God. As we hear this phrase, nothing is impossible with God, this is almost like our own Christian version of the Polar Express bell. As you hear nothing is impossible with God, how does it ring? Does it ring and you hear that joy and belief and faith and excitement for this great joy of news that nothing is impossible with God? Or when you hear this news that nothing is impossible with God, does it sound broken. Like the parents in the story, do you apologize for the mistake that has been made? You see, what happens so often is we hear this, that nothing is impossible with God, and then we look around us and we say, well, if nothing's impossible with God, why Is there a pandemic going on in this world? If nothing is impossible with God, why did I just lose my job? If nothing is impossible with God, why is my marriage on the rocks? If nothing is impossible with God, why are we still seeing the sins of racism in this world? If nothing is impossible with God, why am I battling with all of these addictions? If nothing is impossible with God, why is my child struggling so much at school? If nothing is impossible with God, then why? Why? See, as we come to celebrate the arrival of Jesus Christ, one of the things that maybe we have failed to recognize and celebrate is this nature of sin that Jesus has come to forgive and to to break us free of is a nature that also seeks control and power for ourselves. We want to have our own control. We want to know the answers to everything. We want to know why things are the way they are. And when we don't understand, it seems like chaos. Lately, we've been seeing a lot of rise in uh, conspiracy theories in our nation. Rise in conspiracy theories amongst the vaccine, amongst the the virus, amongst the elections, amongst what's going on in, in social media and who's behind it. And while we hear these things, it can make us feel like those who fall for these or believe in these type of things must be some kind of nut job or wackos. How could somebody believe in these conspiracies? There must be something wrong with them. But psychologists actually say that that's not the case. As much as we want to say that there must be some sort of like mental illness going on there, psychologists say that we are actually doing this to cope with what is going on in the world. That we are wired in such a way that we have to have this control, this understanding, so much so 
that we would rather accept something that seems so far off, so far-fetched, something that barely makes sense. We would rather accept that than to accept the truth that we just don't know, that something is out of our control, to accept that there may just be chaos around us. I think this is a failing of our churches, a failing of our institutions. We, we focus so much on the power and might of what God can do that we begin to then equate it to what we think God should do all the time, that we feel that like we have to have control of what God should be doing. We, we have these great verses that we lift up, like, like uh, Philippians 4, 13 for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And as we hear that, we almost use these as like a, a superhero type verse. You know, that if I have enough faith, if I have enough belief, then I will be able to do anything that I put my mind to because God will give me the power to do it. That I will be able to do whatever I set my mind out to and I will prosper, I will succeed. And so it's no wonder then why this bell of faith can sound broken to us the first time that our plans go awry. The first time we, we find ourselves thrown into this midst of chaos, we can, see as, we can feel as if faith has let us down, as if God has let us down. What we have failed to do is put our full context around these readings and understanding of what God is truly saying as we read Philippians, we always throw out this verse 4.13, but we fail to read 4.12 right before it. I know what it is to have little, and I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and of being in need. For I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. The promise that God gives us here is not a promise that whatever we put our minds to, we are going to be able to do, that God is going to make us succeed in whatever efforts that we do. The promise here is that even in the midst of our chaos, even in the midst of the things that we are unsure of, even in the midst of going hungry or having plenty, God is with us. And because God is with us, we can take those steps forward knowing we can do it. We can do it because God is with us. Even as the chaos rages around us, we will not be overcome because God is with us. Nothing is impossible with God. So this is the Christmas story. You know, if the Christmas story was all about the power and might of God and bestowed upon Mary, we would expect that this to be some sort of fairy tale story, and yet it is not. Mary is almost divorced by her husband for this news. Mary is forced because of a census to go from the town of Nazareth while pregnant to Bethlehem. And when she arrives, there is no place for her to stay. She has to give birth to this Messiah, this king in a stable surrounded by animals. And the only place to lay the king is in a manger, a trough for animals. And the only way to warm them is with bands of cloth. The story doesn't get easier for Mary from here. Somewhere between Jesus' adolescence and Jesus' adulthood, Joseph dies. As Jesus, Jesus enters his ministry, the very town of Nazareth, the, the place where Jesus was working with Joseph and the, the town that helped him to become the man that he, he was, the, the town that helped Joseph and Mary raise Jesus, turns on Jesus and tries to murder him. And of course, later, Mary has to watch helplessly as Jesus is crucified on the cross. 
what Mary has to undertake is not an easy journey. It is not one that is marked simply with success, but it's one that she still sings about with great joy and expectation. Why? Because God is with her. She sings about it because she knows the next step that she takes, God is with her. That God has chosen to be part of her life and has chosen her to be part of God's work in the world. And because of that, she can take the next step forward and the next step after that, even amongst the uncertainties and the chaos before her, because nothing is impossible with God. This Sunday, we lit the candle of peace. For many of us, peace can seem like an unattainable goal. You know, we have peace that we search for, peace from work, peace at home, peace amongst friends and family when there are great tensions, peace in our communities and in our nation and even our world, and it can seem to be unattainable for us, a pipe dream. But what if we saw peace as the very peace that Paul talks about, a peace of contentment, knowing that God is with us, a contentment knowing that in the midst of the chaos, God has actually descended, that the good news of Christmas is that God took on our flesh. God descended to be in the very midst of this craziness in this chaos to be with us and amongst us to redeem us. How are you going to find peace in this season? How are you going to find peace even when things don't make sense? How do you find peace when things are out of your control? Is it by trying to gather it all? Is it by trying to, to grab hold of what you can? Or is it by having that childlike faith? Hearing the bell, the good news. How it, with God, nothing is impossible. That with God, you can go through this chaos. You can walk through whatever you are facing. Doesn't mean it'll be easy. But God is with you, and so you can do it. God has chosen to be with you, with us, to come amongst us. That's the good news of Christmas. God has chosen to be with us in our troubles, in our dangers, in our pains. So let's celebrate. Let's celebrate a God who gives us that peace, who is with us. Amen. This time, as we reflect upon these words, we have a, a great treat for you. We have uh, Elwin and uh, Julia uh, Murray have uh, a duet that they are singing and playing for us, and I invite you just to use this time as a time of reflection as you hear these beautiful uh, songs that they have to play, and as you do, you can write in the glory sightings that you have in the comments, uh, an opportunity to share where you have seen God at work. And so with that being said, let us just appreciate and enjoy this beautiful music from the Murrays.
of her, you saw to the other side. Knowing this was our salvation, Jesus, for our sake, you died. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Spirit, three in one. God of glory, majesty, praise forever to the King of kings. And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath, till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. Then the church of Christ was born, then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old shall not kneel and shall not fade. By his blood and in his name, in his freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus. What a gift uh, from the Murrays there, and I know that's one of the glory sightings already being lifted up is that wonderful song, so thank you uh, to the Murrays. What other glory sightings would you like to lift up? Feel free to write them in now. I know we saw some others that were lifted up. Uh, our food pantry was one that was specifically lifted up by uh, the way that they were able to continue to serve, uh, and I saw a special thanks to Lucy and her selfless and tireless efforts to help organize everyone. I will second that absolutely. Uh, gratitude for the continued generosity of our community and the ways that we show that they are not alone. Um, what other uh, glory sightings do we have? And I see prayers. You can send your prayers in as well. Prayers for the granddaughter of Elizabeth West, who struggles with depression and anxiety. Uh, also prayers for uh, her grandson's eighth birthday tomorrow. That's uh, prayers and praise there, so uh, we'll keep them in prayers. Any other glory sightings or prayers? Glory sighting for the time and talent and treasure that's been shared with our church by so many. Uh, I will agree. I think uh, it's been a, an amazing time, even though we've been uh, separated um, it's been great to see through this, uh, this moment the, the great talents that we have throughout our congregation, and uh, I'm thankful for the, the many ways that so many have been able to share these gifts, uh, whether it's music or whether it's in their readings or behind the scenes and the preparation that many of you uh, do not see the preparation here but uh, are able to benefit from uh, through uh, the live streams that we have or just the, the care uh, in the ways in which we are able to continue to do our ministries. So thank you for that. Oh, we have some more uh, prayers coming up. Uh, prayers for uh, Jackie uh, Lutman dealing with uh, anxiety uh, right now. Absolutely. Um, glory sighting for Diane Chen uh, who was able to read the Christmas story. Uh, to their grandkids through FaceTime. So it's great to be able to have that technology to do that. Uh, prayers uh, for Julie uh, for a smooth procedure tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, praise for the volunteers. Uh, many ways our church members continue to support our community and one another. Uh, prayers for Jacob Crone. Keep Jacob in our prayers. 
Just prayers for our nation, our world, our church, and our military. And continued prayers for Nancy Davis. Absolutely. Any others that we'd like to lift up this morning? If not, as these continue to come in, uh, Facebook Live will be able to upload this uh, later in the service, so as you write them in uh, even later, you'll be able to see them throughout the week. And you can use this as an opportunity in your daily prayers to lift up all of these uh, prayers of our community to God. But at this time, let us go as, as one community now uh, in, in this prayer, lifting up our joys and our concerns together. Almighty God, we give you thanks for gathering us, even though it may not be the way that we wish during this season of Advent. And we ask that as our hearts prepare for your arrival, as we expect that good news, that you may help us to have that good news arrive in a way that opens our heart to, to hear it for its true power. That the difficulties of this year and all that we face may provide an opportunity to hear your good news, maybe even in a new way. And as we celebrate what you have done and are doing in this world, we ask that you continue to work and be with those who suffer, those who are dealing with COVID-19, those who have lost loved ones, those who are battling other illnesses of cancer and heart disease, diabetes and dementia. We pray for those who are going into rehab facilities and for those in long-term care. Have your healing hand upon them and grant them strength. As Christmas approaches and we, we join in this time of joy and expectation, we pray for all those who may be experiencing loneliness or hurt, for whom it may be a blue Christmas. And we ask that your love and your peace may be with them, that they may know that your presence is there, and that because you are with us, we can continue one step at a time forward because nothing is impossible with you. We pray for our communities, those who are in the front lines facing this pandemic, those who are facing the economic toll, who have lost jobs, businesses. We give thanks for those who have worked on the vaccine, those who have distributed it, those who have been the first ready to take it to help to bring an end in sight. But don't let us get weary, but continue to love our neighbors by serving to protect each other. And Lord, we pray for our communities who suffer from loss of home and loved ones from natural disasters, from oppression, who have been forced from their homes all around the world, who face hunger, as those who proclaim your good news, help us to share that good news, to be signs of your good news, not just during this season, but 365 days a year. That those may experience your good news, not just by word, but may see it through those who proclaim you. And all these things we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Before our benediction, there are a couple of things I wanted to share. Uh, as we are preparing for our Christmas Eve services, one thing as we uh, want to incorporate all of the, the wonderful body of Christ in our Christmas Eve service, though we may be separated, we're asking you to send in your pictures, to send in pictures of you or you and your family around your Christmas tree or Christmas decoration that we may include it at the beginning of our service, that everybody may be able to join in and celebrate uh, together as, as this family of Christ. And so you can send those uh, pictures into Ruth uh, office at roundhillumc.org. And please send them in as early as you can so we have time to compile them and put together this slideshow. Uh, it would be great to see everybody together, and so we'd love to get as many of your pictures as we can. Speaking of Christmas Eve, uh, we have a couple of options and uh, opportunities to worship. Uh, the first is going to be a children's, uh, uh, children's service uh, that will be available all day long. So it's a pre-recorded service that if anybody is familiar with the, the show Blue's Clues, it will be similar to that style. So I'll be interacting with uh, the children through the, the camera, uh, and they'll be able to you know, shout back at it as they help me find clues around this space here and, and find out and figure out the, the true meaning of Christmas. And so children are invited to participate in that uh, any time during the day. It will be available on our Facebook page uh, because we know, uh, as a parent myself, I know that it is hard, especially on Christmas Eve, to uh, gather the kids together at a specific time. So this is uh, available at your own leisure. Uh, so you'll look, at that, look for that out early in the morning and you can uh, participate with your family any time that works for you on Christmas Eve for that. The next uh, is a seven o'clock live stream. It'll be in this similar format that we do here. Uh, and so everybody will be able to participate through Facebook Live with the comments, uh, participating with one another uh, live. Uh, if you have a candle at home, any type of candle, uh, feel free to bring that with you to your service, wherever you may be, as we will be singing Silent Night, so you can light it and have that same experience uh, at home singing Silent Night. Finally, we do have a 9 o'clock outdoor worship scheduled, a short one uh, that will be uh, communion and uh, a singing of uh, Silent Night as well. This one uh, is going to be dependent on weather, and it does look like there may be some rain in the forecast for Christmas Eve, so uh, stay alert for uh, updates on Facebook uh, and emails and all of that uh, for how that might uh, play out. We are hoping to be able to do it, uh, but uh, rain could uh, dampen those opportunities. Uh, but uh, stay alert, uh, stay up to date with us through those avenues and uh, we hope to be able to do that nine o'clock service for you all on Christmas Eve as well. That being said, I invite you to go as you prepare for this week in peace, knowing that whatever is before you, you are able to handle. Not because it is in your control, but it because God is with you. That you can take those steps before you because God walks beside you. Go in peace, knowing that God is with us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah.